This morning, turn it to Ephesians, the second chapter. Ephesians, the second chapter. <coughs> Ephesians, the second chapter. Oh, hallelujah. My, 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 my. Amen. Ephesians, the second chapter. When you have it, say me. Amen. We're going to start in the second verse. Today we're going to talk about something that all of us have a problem with. That way you don't have to go out of here today thinking, He was preaching right at me. Because <clears throat> all of us have this problem. Amen? Amen. <clears throat> Hallelujah. It says in Ephesians the second chapter and the second verse, wherein in times past you walked according to the course of this world. Now, he's talking about before you were saved. Amen? Yeah. You walked according to the course of this world. And Paul says here, in time past. Amen? Yeah. Meaning this ain't the way it's supposed to be today. Once you've been born again, once you're saved, this ain't the way it's supposed to be. Wow. How many people know a lot of times, even though we're born again, we're saved, we still walk according to the course of this world. Yeah. Amen? Mm -hmm. Ain't supposed to, but we do. Yeah. And it says, according to the prince of the power of the air. And that's talking about the devil. Amen? Amen? The spirit that now worketh in the children of disobedience. Talking about the world. Yeah. Amen? Those that don't know Jesus. Um, among whom also we all had our conversation in times past. <clears throat> you hear that? Yeah. That lets me know that our conversation was supposed to change whenever we got born again. Oh. <laughs> Amen? Amen. Come, on, Come, on. Come on. I don't know how much plainer can get than this right here. It says, Among whom also we all had our conversation in times past in the lust of our flesh. Come on. Amen? Amen? Talking about walking in the Spirit and not in the flesh. Amen? Talking about being born again and being unsaved. Paul's telling us the difference that, you, that this way you used to be. You ain't supposed to be that way no more. Amen? Amen. Fulfilling the desires of the flesh of and of the mind, and were by nature the children of wrath, even as others. Now that word wrath there means to take revenge. Amen. Yeah. To take revenge, Brother Bill. Yeah. It means anger. It means I'll get even with you. Yeah. Well, Amen. Yeah. It means I can't stand you. Uh oh. It means, you know, I just don't like you. That's the way we're supposed to used to be. Yeah, come on. Amen? Come on. He ain't talking about born-again believers here. He's talking about the way born-again believers used to be. Yeah. In times past. Today we're going to talk about forgiveness for just a few minutes. Now Paul tells us there in Ephesians, the second chapter and the second and third verse, the way we used to be. Then he tells us in Colossians 3 and 13, you don't have to turn there because I'm not going to read but one verse. Colossians 3 and 13, this is the way we're supposed to be now. Somebody say now. Now. See, I ain't the same as I used to be. Amen. Oh, hallelujah. My goodness. Paul says this in Colossians, the third chapter, the 13th verse. Forbearing one another. Forgiving one another. If any man have a quarrel against any, even as Christ forgave you, so also do ye. Plain enough or do I need to expound on that? Amen? This don't say this is a suggestion. This don't say, well, this is just some good advice if you want to take heed to it. No, 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 no. It says, as Christ forgave you, you do the same for others. Amen? Amen. We're talking about forgiveness this morning. The power that forgiveness has. Hallelujah. And there ain't a one of us in here today. You might be holding it now, but at least at one time or another, this hits all of us in some degree to the fact that we have held things against other people. Amen? Amen. Whether it be hatred or whether it be 
jealousy or whatever it is that causes us to feel the way. How many people in here have ever caught yourself thinking, Lord, I don't like the way I feel about that person? Amen. I raise my hand. I don't like the way I feel about that person. None of us should like the way we feel about somebody if we feel like we hate that person. If we feel like we can't forgive that person. That lets us know more about us than it does the person we're having the feelings toward. Amen? Because here we're taught in Scripture that as Christ forgave, Brother Sleece, you're supposed to also forgive others just like Christ forgave you. <clears throat> Can you imagine what kind of condition we would be in today if an all-holy, all-righteous God gave us what we deserve? Oh, we can sit on our past throne of self-righteousness and say they don't deserve my forgiveness. Well, who are you to speak? You didn't deserve the forgiveness of God. If we got what we deserved when we went before Him, we'd have been destroyed. But He dealt out mercy. And in times past, see, we as the children of the world, it was in our nature to deal out wrath or to get even with other people. That would be our thought, you know. Well, I'll show them. Yeah, they do. <clears throat> that ain't supposed to be our nature anymore. Right. See, that's our old fleshly nature, Brother Bill. Amen. The nature of Christ wasn't to, well, I'll show them. No, it was I'll die for them. I'll give my life for them. They have spit on me. They have cursed me. I will bless them. Yeah. I will do good to those that despitefully use me. Oh, I knew it wasn't going to be easy to preach. I didn't know it was going to be this hard, though. Matthew, the 18th chapter, in the 21st verse. Now see, you're not the only one that's had problems with this forgiveness thing. So don't feel like, you know, the only rooster in the barnyard. You're not the one, you're not, don't stick out like a sore thumb this morning. Man has always had problems with this here. Matthew, the 18th chapter, in the 21st verse, Peter comes to the Lord, and he's probably thinking like we do, just how much am I supposed to put up with from these people? Yeah. <clears throat> Just how often am I supposed to have mercy on these people? Just how long must I suffer with this person that continues to do me wrong, that continues to rub me the wrong way? I know what I'll do. I'll go ask the Lord. Surely, I'll put seven times out there because in our Jewish tradition, seven is the number of completion. And surely, you know, and the way they looked at it, if you know somebody did you wrong more than seven times, just cut them off. Don't have nothing to do with them. Just don't show them any mercy at all. So I'll go to the Lord, and I'm sure I'll get some backup on this. So Peter comes to the Lord and says, How oft shall my brother sin against me, and I forgive him? Seven times? Honestly, this is where it's where he wants to stop it right here. Till seven times? That's what you call limited mercy. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. That's what you call limited. Ain't you glad this morning that God don't have limited mercy? Amen. Oh, yeah. Aren't you glad this morning that Brother Bill, he ain't keeping the record to say, uh huh. Brother Bill, that's, that's number eight, buddy. I can't help you no more. Your mercy's done been cut off. Amen. But that's the way our old nature used to be. Yeah. That's the way our old fleshly nature, walking according to the lust of the flesh and the things of the world, that's the way we were. Yeah. And Peter's still dealing with this and wrestling with this. He's thinking, surely. Seven times, you know. Seven times is a good is a good thing. Because I know people don't give you that many chances. Oh, Amen? Yeah. Amen. He said, Lord, maybe seven times. How about that, Lord? How about it? And he's sitting on the edge of his seat and Jesus turns to him and says, I say unto thee until seven times. And if we'd have stopped right there, old Peter would have thought, oh goody. Because yeah. John done did me bad eight times. He did this morning. He got on his eighth chance. Amen. He's out of chances now. But Jesus didn't stop there. Somebody say, thank God for buts. He said, until seven times, but until 70 times seven. Yeah. Now, 70 times seven, even for a redneck boy like me that had McLean County education, is 490 times. Now, was Jesus telling him to get you a list and make sure 350 for Brother Bill? 351 for Brother Bill. No, he was telling him over and over and over and over and over and over. Amen. Even your worst enemy, you probably couldn't sit down and figure out 490 times that you can exact and write down exactly what happened. Amen. 
He's telling Peter, he said, well, seven times is nice, son. But how about seven times seventy? And then he tells him this parable. Oh, this is powerful. I hope you hold on this morning because this is good. He said, therefore is the kingdom of heaven likened to a certain king which would take account of his servants. I'm in the same chapter, 18 and 23, Matthew. And when he had begun to reckon, one was brought unto him which owed him 10,000 talents. Now, I tried to find out how much that was. This man was brought before this king, before this ruler, and they said, this man owes you 10, is that what it said? 10,000 talents. Now, I did a lot of reading on this trying to figure out exactly what that was so we could wrap our mind around the amount of money that that was. Several people, you know, had different opinions. One man said you could get our economists of today together, all of the great ones, put them on a table, around the table, and ask them this question, and they would come away with different figures and arguments over exactly how much it was. But 10,000 talents was somewhere in the neighborhood, and this is just taking a stab at it, of a trillion dollars in today's money. A trillion dollars. Not a hundred, Brother Bill. Not a thousand. Not a hundred thousand. Not a million. A trillion dollars. History says that a talent, one talent, was 15 years wages. That's a bunch. That's a bunch. Mm -hmm. One man said that this would equivalent, it would come out to the equivalent of 150,000 years of work. That's how much this man owed this man when he was brought before him. Probably plus interest. Oh, yeah. That's how much he owed this king. 10,000 talents. A trillion dollars. My goodness, that's a lot of money. Amen? For it says, but for as much as he had not to pay, his Lord commanded him to be sold and his wife and his children that payment would be made. And the servant when he heard this, verse 26, says he fell down and he worshipped him, Brother Bill, saying, Lord, have patience with me. I will, repay, I will pay thee all. I don't know what he thought he was going to do that. But he's just desperate. Amen? Yeah, right. Oh God, don't cut me off. Yeah. Yeah. Don't cut me off. Yeah. I'm desperate. I'm crying out for mercy. Oh, I don't know about you, but I've been there before. Amen? And said, God, I know I deserve to be cut off. I know that this yeah. debt is more than I can yeah. pay. But forgive me, God. Have patience with me. Have mercy on me one more time. Mm -hmm. So this man starts crying out for mercy. And it says that the Lord of that servant was moved with compassion. Verse 27. And he loosed him. And he forgave him the debt. Yeah. <laughs> oh, I think I know how he felt. Amen. Yeah. I didn't know a trillion dollars, honey, but I owed a debt that I could not pay. Hallelujah, hallelujah. And he paid a debt that he did not owe this morning. Amen. And he looked at me and said, I forgive you. I loose you. I forgive the debt. You ain't got to worry about paying it back. I'm going to forgive it. It's gone. No more to be remembered against you. Amen. That's what he said to me. It's gone. It's gone. Now here is this man that gets forgiven of such a debt. And Jesus uses money here because usually, you know, men can relate to money. Amen. So he uses this as an example of forgiveness, Mama. 